Uh, yes, we can. Please go ahead, sir. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I'm listening to Kevin Camp's uh, presentation and, uh, and your the NRC response. I'd like to make a comment uh, first on the uh, on the evacuation issues in Japan. Uh, we've talked because of going around trying to get San Onofre closed over the last couple of years. One of the places that we went to, besides all the city councils, was the uh, emergency responders. And they were adamant that as soon as you start to talk about anything having to do with nuclear, now they, they did believe that they could evacuate if necessary. But if you started talking about nuclear, they said, we don't understand anything about that. We get that from the experts, and they're talking about you guys in Washington. So that's exactly which community is going to be evacuated. They have no idea, and they're going to be relying on you to do it. And that's the part that failed in Japan. Not the little guy who wanted to know what he was supposed to do but the authorities who are going to tell him what to do. And that's your responsibility, and you're the ones that failed in Japan. So let's hope that you do better here, but your answer did not do better. It said, no, the local guy's going to be handling it. They're good at evacuation. Yeah, they are, if they know that they're supposed to do it. Okay, now, what we've been talking about here, I've heard that the, uh, the, the baseline is the, the dry cask storage. It just makes fuel pools safer than the dry cask storage. And that we're relying that on that as a baseline because of NIREG BR0058. And apparently what that NIREG regulation does is it moves the baseline to what's considered zero for another study. So the one in 10,000 years uh, of uh, per accident, for, for uh, accidents per year, one in 10,000 and things like that are all part of that baseline. And we're not really considering the time factor of when are we going to move this stuff to Yucca Mountain if it stays in the pool for two years and then gets moved to some place that's either interim or safer or far away from where it is versus if we move it to the dry casks and then say, well, there's other places we need to worry about more. It's going to stay in the dry casks for 80, 100, 300 years, uh, whatever. Another baseline factor that's not being considered is the, the shutdown factor. I mean, we didn't hear, we heard somebody say, and it was not agreed with, that a dry cask, a single dry cask with a satchel charge would be about 2,500 times less risky than a spent fuel to fire, fire. And uh, so I'm wondering how many times less than shutting a reactor down? You know, what's the difference there? What is, what is our baseline for this sort of thing? And then moving on to the security issues that we're not allowed to talk about, Airplane strikes. Uh, we're talking about small airplanes, small amounts of fuel, and low speed. We're not talking about what actually happened on 9-11 and similar types of things. Um, whether or not the casks can be transported or dropped. We're talking about maybe a six-inch post or an eight-foot drop. When really these are unrealistic values. What about the entire cask being crushed by uh, as it goes under an overpass or something like that? Again, it's are we going to leave it in dry casks? Are we going to move it? Are we going to leave it in central pools? There's more than just two choices. And why would any terrorist get on site just to use one satchel charge? I think it would be far more than one. A uh, couple of more items. During your presentation, these are very complicated issues with the time factor involved. Uh, you can see any graphics, fancy charts showing how these drop over time, uh, not just the temperature or the radiological chance, uh, dangerous, but what about just uh, earthquakes, anything over a long period of time? So if we don't, if we move it to dry casts, it's going to stick around a long time. We're moving in some fuel pools because we're going to move it away soon to different calculation. And Fukushima was mentioned. We're two and a half years away from it almost. And yet, uh, you guys don't know what to do about Fukushima, and this is rather important. You said that you have people on site in Tokyo. Now, Tokyo is so far away from Fukushima that the Olympics are going to be held there. That's not really on site. I think you're afraid to go on site, and I don't blame you. So I don't want to see one dry cask compared to a reactor spent fuel pool fire. I want to see fabrication errors included, uh, unsafe transfer included, and uh, other other events all extrapolated to not one Pilgrim reactor, but a hundred very different reactors. The chances of the study being accurate 
for all of the different reactors situations is you know one percent because they're all very very different they all have enormously thick rooms so of meaningless not one compares to another so uh, i think that's about all the things that i would like to cover and uh, i look forward to getting the uh, the answers to this uh, not just here uh, in, at the at the panel today, but in the more kind of these are things that we need to change. We need to stop talking about incremental safety issues, but we look at the whole situation and what is safe for America's nuclear waste. We haven't solved it in 65 years. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Hoffman. My name is Lynn Finch. I'm the assistant facilitator. Did you have a specific question that you'd like an answer to today? Well, other than uh, what is the baseline that we're talking about, what the dangers are, I don't think there was really a very specific one. Uh, hi, this is uh, Jennifer Yule from the Office of Nuclear Reactor Regulation. Um, the question that we're trying to focus ourselves on here um, is whether or not um, there's a substantial increase in safety by um, moving the older fuel which is typically the five-year-old fuel from, this, from the highly or the um, high-density coals in, into dry cast storage that would then um, create a low-density loading situation in the spent fuel pools. Um, and yeah, but it creates a permanent situation in the dry cast storage arena, and there's a time factor involved. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I didn't hear your. I, I didn't hear you. If you could repeat your statement again. Yes, thank you. Sorry. Once you move the older fuel out of the spent fuel pool, you create a safer situation in the spent fuel pool, which you're arguing is not substantially safer. But you now create a permanent situation of having an additional dry cask or 10 dry casks or 50 dry casks, which are now going to sit for dozens, maybe even hundreds of years. So that time factor being considered as to how long you would have moved it from the spent fuel pool off-site completely versus from the spent fuel pool to the dry casks where it remains for 200 years. Um, yeah, we didn't address um, what specifically the risks were um, uh, for the fuel in the dry casks um, uh, because uh, the, the, the public interest that we had heard and the request from Congress was to determine whether we need to take regulatory action to move it into uh, the dry casks uh, because of the um, viewpoints um, that many share uh, that um, their feeling is that the dry casks are safer and they're not um, in that determination. I don't believe that they are uh, as concerned about the aging of the dry casks um, as the uh, purported, in their, in their perception, uh, the risk in, in the spent fuel pool. So when we did our analysis, we, we, didn't, we assumed pretty much that there was no risk associated with dry cast storage. And so that would maximize the safety increase by uh, going to the lower density loading configuration. Uh, but when we did so, we uh, still did not reach uh, the enough of a safety benefit to warrant our regulatory action. So I hope that answers your question. I, I suppose so, thank you. Oh yeah, go on, click the subscribe button. Uh, we need to get subscribe and get this unity stronger and beat YouTube at their own game. Okay, that's what this is about. Like I say, go to the Remix button, hit the Remix button. That way you'll have this video and, and keep up with this. Otherwise, you know, YouTube's just going to control us, guys, and it's, it's really bad.